Good morning, everyone. I God be with you wherever you are. We are on a sermon series on the ministry of uh, Jesus. And this morning, I want to share on the topic called as His Family. And so, may the Spirit subdue our hearts and minds as we read the Word of God from Mark chapter 3. Let me read for all of us, beginning with verse 31. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing aside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Verse 33, Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The first question that popped to mind when we read this passage are that Jesus, was Jesus advocating that we break our earthly family tie? Did Jesus dishonour his mother and really set the wrong example for us? I pray that this message will help to clarify the words of Jesus in this uh, passage. Let me start with verse 31. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. The then looks back to an earlier verse which sheds the reason why the family travelled 30 miles from Nazareth to Capernaum to catch up with Jesus. Let me read uh, chapter 3, verse 21 for us. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For they say, he is out of his mind. Now, to take charge is the Greek word which means to make an arrest. And the same word that is used when King Herod arrested John the Baptist. And the reason is actually very simple because the family thought that Jesus was insane. He was out of his mind. They disapproved of what he was saying, what he was doing, and so they came to exercise authority over Jesus quickly while there is still a chance to preserve some rep reputation to the family name. Jesus was family, and who else better to rescue him from this madness than family. But their judgment or misjudgment was not without grounds. We read in verse 14, uh, these words, He appointed the 12 apostles. This recruitment exercises that Jesus was uh, undertaking was dangerous because it might suggest to them that Jesus was organizing and starting a rebellion which would incur swift and merciless response of the Romans if they come to hear about it. Secondly, Jesus was too busy for his own good. In verse 20 we read, And again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. Jesus was doing the healing and people were just kept on uh, coming uh, to him. And his busyness was really untypical. You must remember, not so long ago, Jesus was in his village of Nazareth, living ordinary, quiet life. And thirdly, they thought that his miracles were evil, empowered by the prince of demons. Verse 22, the teachers of the law of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub. Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And nobody wants a family member labelled as demon-possessed. And who better to pass his judgment than teachers of the law? Who would dare to question their authority and judgment on spiritual matters. And you also must remember, they saw Jesus grew up, 
they saw him plying his carpenter trade without showing any superpowers. And now he was like healing the sick and the lame. Let me read verse 31 for us. Standing aside, they sent someone in to call him. So Mary and his brothers uh, could not get in because the place was packed. So they got a messenger to send word to Jesus who says, this, and it, who says to Jesus, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Implicit in this, he says, don't you think you should stop and uh, follow them back? Because you, in those days, family are very important. And uh, Jesus did not deny that they are not his mother and brothers. He did not say, no, those outside are not my mother and brothers. He was not breaking earthly ties. But he did ask a rather strange question uh, by saying this, who are my mother and my brothers? Strange because Jesus should know uh, that uh, they are their family. And so in this response, it would seem that Jesus was being rude. He, Jesus did not care for his ministry. And if we think so, we must look down the road, three years down the road. As Jesus was hanging on the cross, these are the words that he spoke. May I read to you John chapter 19, verses 26 to 27. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. At the cross, Jesus took care of his filial responsibility by entrusting his mother to the care of Apostle John, who took Mary into his home from that time on. So you see, there is a time when Jesus is committed to do the work of God and, and no one and nothing can stop him from doing this. But there is also a time when Jesus makes sure that he honoured his mother and took care of her before he died on the cross. But this is not the first time that Jesus spoke harshly to his mother. If you recall, the first incident occurred 18 years earlier when Jesus stayed back at the temple in Jerusalem. And his parents uh, returned home thinking that Jesus must have been with relatives or friends. And then they could not find the son among them. And so they hurried back. And after three days, they found Jesus in the temple courts. And this is what the mother asked the son, Why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And here's the reply from Jesus. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Didn't you know that I have to be in my father's house? Again, this appears to be rude. And so here we... From these two incidents, we, we have this very important principle. And if I may summarize this, Jesus place, places his sonship to God the Father above his sonship to his earthly parents. There was a time when Jesus drew a line and thought it fit to let the parents know of his priority to God. But there is also a time that he became obedient to them because in Luke chapter 2, verse 51, we read, Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. Until he was about 30 years of age, Jesus lived with the family, worked under them. Jesus was an obedient son to Mary and Joseph. Here in verse 34, Jesus radically pronounced his new family. Let me read. Then he looked those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. 
everyone born in the flesh belongs to an earthly family with a biological father. You cannot choose, you cannot change your earthly family. No matter what you say, no matter what you do. Even if you were to change your name today or hide somewhere else in a land far away, you are still born into that family. But what Jesus is saying in this verse is that there is a deeper kinship bonded not by earthly blood ties, but by His blood. Here are my mother and my brothers. Everyone born again in the Spirit belongs to a spiritual family with God as the Father. Now this family, every one of us can choose to be a member of if we trust in Jesus the earthly family will pass away, we will pass on, but the new family, the, the heavenly family will last forever, even when we are in heaven. Clearly, God commands that we honour our parents. It's the right thing to do, even if they are unbelievable. But equally clear is that obedience to God must always come first before our obligation to family and friends. There is an order, and this is that order that we must always observe. And for this reason, and for this reason, Jesus says this thing, the first and the greatest commandment is to love God. And then the second, in that order, is to love our neighbours. Our neighbours include, of course, our parents. In fact, Jesus also said this, if anyone loves their mother and father more than him, they are not worthy of his name. That said, it is not blanket excuse for us to disobey our parents in the guise of honouring God in any and every situation. Not every God activity, not every church activity takes precedence over honouring our parents because you must remember that honouring parents is also um, a God activity. So we have to pray uh, for discernment, uh, for uh, the ability to make the right decision. There are times when we have to heed our parents' instruction and not fulfil our Christian obligation. But there are also other times when we have to disregard the wishes of our parents to do something else that God requires. When we have to do those things, of course, the parents will be disappointed uh, or angry with us. And the loss of intimacy in our family relationship, however, will be compensated by the care and the support of our Christian fellowship. Moving on to the last verse, 35. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Interestingly, Jesus included sister, even though only his mother and his brothers were at the scene. And so this inclusiveness brings to mind Mary of Bethany, because if you remember, she was also sitting at the feet of Jesus while Martha was hard uh, at work. And so in the same way as the people were at the house was gathered around Jesus uh, in a circle, uh, Mary uh, was also seated uh, listening to the teaching of Jesus. But you must remember this main qualification to be a member of his family. Obedience defines who are in his family. So we come on Sundays, sometimes we greet one another, uh, brothers and sisters, and it's a very welcoming kind of greeting, but we always have to bear in mind uh, that it is not just uh, people who call themselves Christians, uh, not just uh, people who uh, come for Sunday service, services belong to that family. It's only the people who are really doing the will of God. 
what do we mean by doing the will of God? In a parallel passage of this same encounter, Matthew makes it clear who Jesus was speaking to. And so in Matthew chapter 12, verse 49, he pointed to his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. In other words, he was talking to his disciples, those who believed and those who followed him. He was not talking uh, to the religious leaders who may be there to observe and maybe catch Jesus saying the wrong things or doing the wrong things and to oppose him. They were not like fans. They were not there to watch the latest celebrity in town and watch him do a miracle uh, or just meeting with some friends uh, to have a day outing out and then going back to live their own lives. They were following Jesus. And by that, the two things which makes it distinctive of a follower of Jesus is, the, is this. They were listening to His Word. They were seated around Him. How else do we know God's will without the Word, without reading the Word of God? And secondly, they were busy engaged in His ministry, doing His work. In fact, they were as busy as Jesus and they had no time to eat as well. They are not spectators, but they are participants in the ministry of Jesus. The good news is this, that even Jesus' family, who did not know Him as Lord and Saviour initially, joined into the new family later on. In Acts, we read, after His resurrection, Mary joined the apostles uh, for prayer. One of his uh, brothers, stepbrothers, James, became a church leader in the first council of Jerusalem. And he wrote the epistle, uh, book of James. And he introduced himself as servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another brother, Jude, also wrote another book, the book of Jude. And he called himself a servant of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, there's good news. Jesus looks at us. Jesus wants to welcome us into his family. And Jesus points to us, you are my brother, you are my sister, you are my mother, because you do God's will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God for our earthly family. Thank you also that we have this new family in Christ, a new family in Topayo Methodist Church. And so, as you go forth uh, today and for the rest of the week, may I wish you uh, the wisdom of God that He will guide you into making right decisions to honour God and to honour your parents as well. May the blood of Jesus cleanse you from all sins and all sicknesses particularly to guard you against being infect, infected by the COVID-19 virus. And may the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you to seek out His will by uh, studying of the God's Word and then to serve Him in ministry uh, as a disciples of Christ. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Church. My name is Roslyn, and I am the chairperson of this year's Easter event, TPMC Gives. You know, with the cloud of COVID-19 hanging over us, let's not forget that this year is TPMC's 50th anniversary, a year of jubilee, ushering in a season of restoration of wholeness. You know, even though we are not able to meet physically for the next two weeks, I want to borrow the words of Craig Groeschel that says, God is not calling us to go to church. He is calling us to be the church, the hope of the world. As such, this Easter, we celebrate Jesus. We remember that Jesus gave of his body and blood on the cross to save us, to restore us. In that same way, we want to do the same through TPMC Gifts, which is a two-day event where we distribute bread and donate blood. Now, this is a symbolic act where we represent 
the saving work of Jesus to the community in Topayo. Details of the event can be found on our church website and social media platforms. Registrations start today. You can register through the links provided online. Come, register as a blood donor or a bread distributor, better yet, both. Let's together, as God's people, bring hope and cheer to the community that he has placed us in for the past 50 years. God bless you.